Chris Jenner lookalike goes viral. Oh my gosh, Cole Sprouse reunited with former co-star. And Taylor Swift criticized for speaking about Scooter Braun. Uh, all that and more on today's Daily Hollywood Rundown. It's Friday. Hello everyone, it is finally Friday the 13th. <sighs> we have been waiting for this day for so many different reasons, <laughs> which we're gonna cover in today's episode of the Daily Hollywood Rundown. Rundown. I'm Emil Ennis Jr. I'm Susan Morad, and Friday the 13th, when you first said that, I was like, but Friday the 13th is also pretty spooky it as is. well. It's um, like, those gonna come out today. I know, mm, but there is also so many exciting things happening today that I almost forgot that it's usually like a Ooh, right, right. Anyway, you guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel before, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell to be notified the second we post a new Clever News update. And leave comments because today we are doing You're So Clever where your, where your comments are highlighted so you might get featured in a future episode. Yes, well, we have to get into the tea. This first story isn't really tea though, but it deals with Cole Sprouse reuniting with his former co-star and it actually is really cute. We know Jughead's livelihood on Riverdale is up in the air. Like, did Betty Cooper murder Jughead Jones with a rock? We will have to wait and find out. But if Cole Sprouse's role on Riverdale is limited, he won't have to worry about landing a new job because he may be reprising a blast from the past role. So if you didn't know, way back when Cole and Dylan Sprouse were little kids, they starred in a hit comedy, Big Daddy with Adam Sandler. Go back to sleep. I wet my bed. Mm, all right. Nice and dry. No more wetness. And while the movie was a one-off, there might be hope for a sequel. On Tuesday night, Sandler spoke to Entertainment Tonight at the premiere for his new drama, Uncut Gems. Cole was also in attendance to Sandler's surprise, and when asked if he would bring Cole and Dylan back for a sequel, Adam spilled the tea and he said, quote, I won't do that to him. He's doing fine. But like I said earlier, Cole's fate on Riverdale is up in the air and the guy could be without a job in the near future, which we highly doubt he will ever be out of a job. But in any case, a Big Daddy sequel could be on the cards. Gosh, mm, that Big would be Daddy. fun. Yeah. I used to love that movie. Yeah. It's crazy when you see like people who were, especially like young child stars, reunite with like people who were already like adults and when they're older and now they're adults and yeah. it's weird. Uh, it's like this weird universe and you're like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super cool. <sighs> okay, so it is time for one of our favorite segments called WTF OMG, oh, yeah. where we come across things on the internet that make us go WTF OMG. And we already did this segment earlier this week mm -hmm. in another episode, but this one is too good. <laughs> It is going absolutely wild on the internet yeah. and we need you guys to also weigh in. Okay guys, this one is wild. Because just when we thought we knew everything about the Kardashians, a clip has emerged that is driving the internet crazy because it appears that Kris Jenner, I don't know, lived some sort of alternate life as a host or a news anchor at some point. But not only that you guys, but that Kris Jenner interviewed the Beyonce when she was just 11 years old and never actually told anyone about it. All right, so this theory comes to you courtesy of Matthew Knowles' Instagram. Beyonce's dad, after he shared a throwback clip from 1992 of Beyonce being interviewed by this lady who looks exactly like Kris Jenner. Are you guys ready for it? Take a look. Girls time. Girls time, and uh, we've got three lead singers and three lead dancers, as they call it, and they've been just practicing their hearts out, and this is Beyonce. Now tell me about getting over the stage fright. I mean, how did this go from having fun and singing for a few people to where, I mean, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna try to make it big. Well. <laughs> um, hello, Chris, is that you? Because if not, you certainly have a twin out there. And in the caption, he wrote, this week's Throwback Thursday also comes from back in 92. Beyonce was about 11 years old and already working hard. Here she is talking about getting over stage fright. I'm interested in hearing your feedback. Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. Well, as you could imagine, there were so many comments asking whether this was actually Kris Jenner. Like this person who said, is that Kris Jenner? And is that Kris Jenner? And this person who chimed in with their theory saying, People, there's no way Chris was moonlighting as a local news anchor in Houston, thousands of miles away from her new husband, she married Bruce in 91, and kids. The clip also made its way to Twitter, which already has over a million views, along with this tweet that says, Hold the hell up, is that Chris Jenner interviewing an adolescent fiance? Well, while this might be a case for the FBI, alas, E! News reports that according to their source, quote, that the interviewer is not, in fact, the famous mamager. I don't know about this. Chris Jenner, I want to hear from you. Uh, 
because I was so shook when I watched this. This is wild and I think it shook me even more because Kris Jenner does have a history of being on camera. She had her talk show, obviously we all know Kris, but before that, there's an episode of Keeping Up um, a couple of weeks ago or maybe a couple months ago, it was the episode where Kim shot her Skims infomercial and she shows a clip from oh, Chris back in the day. And she used to wear those outfits. Yeah, and she used to be on infomercial like hosting. So I'm <laughs> like, it could be. But I, I guess I'll trust E, but I do want to hear from Chris. I need her to address yeah, this. And I think she might. I think she might. You know, Chris loves And the where is this woman now? I know. Yes, prove it. We where is the look What's going like? on? All right, guys, moving on from WTF OMG to You're So Clever, another one of our favorite segments where we highlight our favorite comments from the week. So let's just kick it off, shall we? Starting with Teelan, who says, all of y'all saying that lie detectors aren't reliable or in the now as poop. I could have sworn Chris used a lie detector on the show to prove OJ isn't Chloe's dad. Oh, okay, with a crying laugh in the murder. Guys, that is awful. But I had to highlight the comment because it was funny. Okay, moving on. Gucci Mademoiselle said, love this channel. Y'all are such great hosts. Thank you. Chesney Lane said, OMG, I've been watching you guys for a while now and I just now realize your name is spelled with two S's. Oh, thank you. Well, at least you realize because most people never realize. It's I call like, her uh, Sussin sometimes. Sussin. <laughs> it's like when Siri and like some of those things that are like voice uh -huh. automated, there's always a very interesting pronunciation of my name. Susan. Miriam says, the chemistry total they have are best friend goals and I'm glad we have the best people bring the tea every week. Keep being so amazing. Clever, bring us the tea. Aww. We bring all the tea. All the tea. And then there's, love your jacket, Emil. Thank you. It was from <laughs> Zara. It was the one I was wearing yesterday. Uh, I've had it for like three years now. And people always compliment me on it. I like so. that jacket. Thank you. And thank you guys for leaving your comments. Remember, you can leave a comment any day of the week and we pull from every single episode. So make sure you leave your comments and you may be featured in You're So Clever. You're so clever. All right, guys. So of course we talked at the top of the show about this being Friday the 13th. So far the ghost in our studio <laughs> has not made an appearance. However, we have to talk about <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to do something. We have to talk about Taylor Swift because today is her birthday, her 30th Yay! birthday, and Swifties all around the world are, <laughs> are celebrating and wishing her happy birthday. I had a brain fart there. Um, you but farted? <laughs> I did not what? fart, no. but Taylor also um, accepted the award for Woman of the Decade at the Billboard Women in Music event last night in LA. And let's just say that people are talking about a very specific part of her speech. So the event took place at the Palladium in LA last night and Taylor gave a 15 minute speech accepting her award. Jamila Jamil presented her with the honor and the speech has everyone talking for multiple reasons. So she started off her speech saying, so what does it mean to be the woman of this decade? Well, it means I've seen a lot. When this decade began, I was 20 years old. I had put out my self-titled debut album when I was 16, the album that will become my breakthrough album, which was called Fearless. And she goes on to talk about criticism that she's faced over the decade, being painted as a villain, which led to reputation and how she's moved forward. She also shouted out some of her favorite musicians like Lizzo, Halsey, Camila Cabello, Billie Eilish, Hailey Kiyoko, Roselia, Megan Thee Stallion, and more. And she had some things to say. We are held at a higher, sometimes impossible feeling standard. And it seems that my fellow female artists have taken this challenge and they have accepted it. It seems like the pressure that could have crushed us made us into diamonds instead. And what didn't kill us actually did make us stronger. And even though she says so many great things, she finally spoke out about the Scooter Braun drama since her AMA's performance. She said, as your resident loud person, I feel the need to bring it up. That is the unregulated world of private equity coming in and buying up our music as if it is real estate, as if it's an app or a shoe line. This just happened to me without my approval, consultation, or consent. After I was denied the chance to purchase my music outright, my entire catalog was sold to Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings in a deal that I'm told was funded by the Soros family, 23 Capital and the Carlisle Group. Yet to this day, none of these investors have bothered to contact me or my team directly to perform their due diligence on their investment. On their investment in me to ask how I might feel about the new owner of my art, the music I wrote, the videos I created, photos of me, my handwriting, my album designs. Then she went on to address Scooter in detail. And of course, Scooter never contacted me or my team to discuss it prior to the sale or even when it was announced. I'm fairly certain he knew exactly how I would feel about it though. And let me just say that the definition of the toxic male privilege in our industry is people saying, but he's always been nice to me. So we're glad she took the time to address this, but according to TMZ, reactions were mixed. 
They said, quote, the reaction to Taylor's speech seemed mixed. When she finished speaking about Scooter, she seemed to wait for applause and it did not come immediately. And when it did, it was less than thunderous. One female exec in the room said afterward, the night was supposed to be about inspiration, but it turned into another poor little Taylor Swift. It's hard to watch someone who's had such incredible privilege to complain about their own personal issues. However, comments on the speech on YouTube were overwhelmingly positive, like this one that says, Taylor deserved this, such a great artist in person. Okay, here's the thing. I completely disagree with what that person said, only because obviously I wasn't in the room, you weren't in the room, mm -hmm. but we did watch the speech and she's talking about what she's dealt with over a decade. And I think it would be awkward if she didn't address the current things that she's dealing with as she enters this new decade. I don't know. And I think if she didn't address it, people would have an issue that she didn't right. address it. Like, because I feel like it's such a hot topic and I know it's been dragged out in the media for weeks now, but she was being really specific about it too. And in other like, previous interviews and speeches sometimes she wasn't really like being as specific yeah, and, saying and, and, name. and saying Scooter's name and in this case she has and so I feel like if that's what she wanted to say in her speech everyone's got a right to say what they want. Right. Yeah. Alright you guys it is time for the final rundown. One and a half minutes on the clock kicking it off with Harry Styles who's dropped his album. Harry Styles dropped Fine Line and fans are loving it. But Harry opened up to Rolling Stone about the secrets in the new album and it really gives further insight into the songs and album as a whole. We suggest if you're loving the album, go to Rolling Stone and read Harry's breakdown of each song in detail. As far as the album, he said, the overall arc is just that I tried to redefine what success means to me. I tried to rewrite what I thought about it. A lot changes in two years, especially after coming out of the band and just working out what life is now. I feel so much freer making this album. You get to a place where you feel happy even if the song is about the time when you weren't that happy. So good, so yeah. excited for this new era. I am too, but we have some Kim and Kanye news. Kim and Kanye have debuted their family Christmas card. The Kardashian Christmas card is always a fun part of pop culture when it comes to the holidays. However, this year, fans were treated to a Christmas card from the Kardashian West. So Kim took to her Instagram to share this adorable laid back casual pic of their cute family with the caption, the West family Christmas card. Aww. I love Christmas cards. I know, we should do a clever Christmas we card. Should. That would be fun. I'm already in a, a You're already festive. Attire, and you know? we've actually got these, um, these, these ugly clever Christmas sweaters. Oh, not in that, please God, no. <laughs> Um, but you guys, this is exciting. And also the streamies are happening today, right now, today. They're all, ha it's all happening. So stay tuned to Clever for plenty of updates and uh, coverage. Oh. Oop. There you go. Yes, and we will see you guys. Tomorrow. Well, in a second. Yeah. We're about to. Just... Oh, yep. But... Okay, we're back. Here we are. So, <laughs> we're not going quite yet. But guys, oh. while you're here, we just want to ask you a few questions. Um, first, thank you so much for watching. If you are here to the end of the show, we really do appreciate it. We do appreciate it, it so much. Um, I want to know what you guys think about Taylor's speech and her being the woman of the decade by Billboard. Let us know in the comments section below. And also, what did you do to celebrate Taylor's birthday? Oh, yes. Did you send her a tweet or an Instagram? post or did you send her some home baked cookies stream all her albums all those things well, actually, also, maybe not the just I actually just, just love, love her. her for now until she re-records them you know you know <laughs> what we're talking about but also I really want to know this clip of Chris Jenner is it Chris Jenner is it not Chris Jenner who is this person do you have any theories do you know maybe you can do a deep dive in the right. internet what show and was it like, know, I like so many questions so many questions uh, let us know in the comment section below and we'll be back here tomorrow for celebrity lowdown but wait, before you go anywhere, like we just said, we'll be back here for Celebrity Lowdown on Saturday, but we can also catch up on yesterday's episode of DHR right here. Yeah, and guys, click right down there to subscribe because then you'll never miss a single thing and click that bell because bells are fun. Doom, doom, doom. Oh, hark how the bell, sweet son of a bell. Ha, 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 ha.